What's up, Sooner fans? Welcome back to the Sooner Surge Softball Edition here with Braden and Jay. If you're not part of what's going on at the Sooner Surge, make sure you click the button to subscribe. Really appreciate all you guys viewing our videos and commenting and liking, especially in the world of softball where it's getting fall outside, boys. But I tell you what's not falling is the number one ranking for the Sooners. As again, uh, today, uh, the Sooners receive another number one uh, accolade ranking as they were awarded the number one transfer class in this offseason from D1 College Softball. Heartland Sports did an article about this, but we've talked about the four girls, that the four ladies they got out of the transfer portal, right? I think it's interesting that three of the top five besides OU were actually uh, SEC schools. Uh, so what's that tell you about OU moving to the SEC? Softball powerhouse. But let's get to it. The four ladies that OU pulled out of the portal, uh, Peyton Monticelli, Carly Keeney, uh, Kelly Maxwell, and Riley Ludlam. Three pitchers, guys. Talk to us about this class out of the portal. Huge, huge for OU. Huge. Yeah. You're right, Braden, and it is huge. And with them looting, losing Jordy Ball, um, they went and got three pitchers. And we've talked about the depth they have in pitching now in the in the room. They have basically six pitchers deep. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how uh, Patty uses those six. But you talk about Monticelli. I know in high school, junior and senior year, she was a state Gatorade State Player of the Year. Uh, oh, yeah. She I can mean pitch, okay? At Wisconsin, she was good. You got – we all know what Kelly Maxwell can do, guys. I mean, we we faced her as OU, uh, you know, at softball. We faced her many times, uh, and we've seen her just pitch fabulous games, and now she's on the OU team. And then you got Carly Kenny, who's very experienced as well. And so you bring some experience in to go with some of the youngsters they have with S.J. Guerin and um, uh, Kirsten Deal. And then you got Nicole May, who's got a ton of experience. I mean, what a pitching staff. I mean, you could basically split that pitching staff up to three different teams. And three teams would have two stud pitchers. Is that crazy? Yeah, yeah. and I saw I saw in that article that the three uh, pitchers coming into the portal, 981 strikeouts, guys, between the three of them. 92 yeah. wins. 92 wins. ERA of 2.10. Now, I know they lost a dog in Jordy Ball, uh, just elite, elite pitcher. But these three combined with what they have, like you said, Jay, uh, really special group. And we even had S.J. Guerin on the pod and talked about how – she talked about how excited she was to see how Coach Gasso is really going to mix the pitchers up. But another, I think, one that's going to be unsung, uh, Riley Ludlam out of Furham. Uh, I, I, I think that – uh, her ability to uh, be a backup role to, I said firm, Furman. I, I think her ability to be a backup catcher is going to uh, really help Kenzie Hansen, maybe give her some breathers. Um, so I think she'll be doing well in that role. And she was a good hitter. I think she had uh, somewhere close to 50 RBIs, uh, 41, I think maybe was the exact number. But so I think Riley Ludlam's going to uh, bring something special to OU next year as well. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the most important thing they got from the portal um, is they have they have position players right now that can fill in. But when you look at it, with what was returning in that pitching staff, you had Nicole May with a ton of experience, and then you had S.J. Guerin and Kirsten Deal, who are really good pitchers. They just don't have a ton of experience. So what what you do with this portal is you got you get three pitchers with experience coming in, and so. I just, I mean, to me, it's just, it's ridiculous how good this pitching staff is going to be. I, and I know I'm going to have people come on here and make comments about it's not Jordy Ball. You, you, They didn't replace Jordy Ball. I get it. Jordy Ball, like Jeremy said, was elite. But Kelly Maxwell is a dang good pitcher. Nicole May's a dang good pitcher. These other, uh, Monticelli, Keeney, really dang good pitchers. And then you got Kirsten Deal, stud, re high recruited pitcher. SJ Guerin, highly recruited. They just haven't had time to shine yet, but they will. And this staff, it would not shock me at all for this staff at the end of the year to have a 
either close to or lower ERA than they did last year. That might be a hot take. It could be a hot take. I also expect uh, possibly one of those to redshirt next year. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to really, uh, I, you know, I don't know if, yeah, I think there could possibly be one of those redshirting. Just see who would we'll that see be? How it goes. But uh, so you, you add all these guys and uh, really special players. Uh, most of those that you said, maybe all of them guys uh, receive some kind of accolade at their former place uh, uh, where they played. Uh, either conference or uh, maybe even bigger than that. Because we know Kelly Maxwell was co-pitcher of the year in the Big 12 with Ball in 2022, okay? Uh, these others, you already mentioned some accolades they had. So, yeah, Brayton, out of the four, uh, who are you looking forward to the most uh, seen in the Sooner jersey? Uh, Kelly Maxwell. Oh, yeah, I think – I mean, that's the one that uh, – Bedlam's going to be fun. Is there year. any chance I, – I would love our viewers' comments on this. Is there any chance – the first game of Bedlam, that she's not being the starting pitcher. Yes, she is the starting pitcher. I think when they play Bedlam, the first game, I think she'll be the starter. Do you not? Oh, for sure. And and here's the thing, guys. Uh, Patty Gasso, uh, we talked about, even today did a video on uh, them landing another 2025 commit. Her ability to gather people from the portal, not just – not just certain players, the right players to fit the to culture fit. at OU and ones that's going to mesh well with what they have there. I, I I don't know how we can you, – you can't continue to come up with adjectives to describe Patty Gasso and her leadership and what she is doing in Norman, Oklahoma, guys. And, and Jeremy, do you have that list? And do you know the top five? Did they list the top five portal – teams it was uh OU was one Arkansas was two uh I, I want to say South Carolina was four and Alabama five and I, I think three was uh a Pac-12 or was it Ohio State it was one of well, those my, two. maybe my, a Pac-12 my point being my point being is this these other teams these other college teams if you're wanting to beat OU then you're probably gonna have to go get the number one transfer portal class or have a couple of really good recruiting years you're you got to that that's why i'm kind of like i really thought a few teams in you know I, I thought maybe a team like florida or somebody may go get a couple of the ones that were in the portal that were really highly ranked like uh vauder i think it was vauder out of stanford and then the the hitter out of uh uh indiana i'm trying to think of her name i lost it turn turn yeah like i thought i thought there might be some teams that like tried to get multiple stud players to try to like Hey, we're going to go be OU. I don't. I don't think anybody did it. Look, obviously, nobody did as well as OU in the portal. For sure, that's right. And uh, yeah, you guys that are not part of what's going on at the Sooner Surge, be a part of it. And if you are, just know we have some more Sooner softball player interviews coming at you this week, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, we're going to continue to provide the content. Each day, battle series is upon us. It's getting closer. Love Field is is making progress. Exciting times in Norman. OU again uh, rewarded the number one transfer class. No surprise. Patty Gasso is the goat in softball. Till next time, guys. Boomer. Boomer. Boomer.